Thanks so much for stopping by to another video with Amy Makes That. As always, I'm so happy you're here today and hope you're having an amazing day so far. Today's video is going to be a highly requested video and very useful for my brides out there. And it is on how to print envelopes for your wedding invitations. I could have saved so much money knowing these tips that I'm about to tell you and time too. Because if you're a bride, you know that your time is very valuable and if we can save money money or save time on anything, we definitely will. Shockingly, I did not use my Cricut with this. So if you don't have a Cricut and you're watching my YouTube channel here, the two things that you really need are your computer and a printer. I know that everyone is not going to have the same printer as I, but it should be around the same method that I do use. And I do print off of Microsoft Word. So before I get into the tutorial, I wanted to talk about my sponsorship today, which is Creative Fabrica. If you guys have watched my videos for probably ever, you would know that, oh my god, a cloud just came in. No, this is not good. Sun's coming back. I think. It's back, it's back, we're good. So if you've been following me for quite some time, you know that I always recommend Creative Fabrica. They are well known for their fonts, their graphics, but they also have a lot of, like an amazing amount of cool stuff on their website. But today I have a special link for you guys to check out. I will put it in the comment section as well as in the video description. So what my link does, it gives you unlimited access to over three million fonts and graphics. For just one month, you can get access to all of that for just a dollar. And the best part is that you can use this for commercial use. So for all of my small business owners out there or my Cricut Craft business owners, this is the perfect opportunity to hop on that deal. And of course, you can cancel any time after that, but the first month will be a dollar. And then after that, it does renew at $19 per month. But you can cancel that any time that you'd like, and it's honestly one of the best deals. I wish I had this when I was starting out with all my fonts. So again, that link will be in the video description as well as a comment down below it will be pinned so you can check that out and creative fabrica is also having an amazing amazing bundle I don't think you guys are ready for this and it is called the spectacular collection big bundle you get wait for it 500 fonts over 1300 graphics for $19 it's one purchase nothing else after that. This is literally a $10,000 value. I usually spend $19 on just one font. So $19 on not only 500 fonts, but also 1300 SVGs and graphics. Guys, if I were you, I would hop on this right now. Whether you are a beginner crafter, a business owner, or if you're someone that just has a Cricut and you make things for yourself. Because again, I would not be standing here recommending Creative Fabrica if I did not support them already. I've been using them for almost two years now and I've had no complaints. So yeah, those will be linked in the video description. And also the fonts that I use in today's video will be linked in the video description. Now that we got that out of the way, let's finally get into the video and I hope you enjoy. Welcome to VoiceOver Amy. So here I have my Google Sheets. This comes with any Gmail account for free, by the way. So if you don't have Excel, you can use this, but this is how I categorized all of my friends and family addresses. Um, I can make this a template if you guys want. You'll see that everything is really organized. I also didn't use this yes and no column because I duplicated the original one from my engagement party list. And the number on the side helped me keep track of how many envelopes I actually need. So that's why everything is color coordinated. So I have everyone individually on here. So this is how the envelopes came out. Um, this is obviously a fake address. And then this is the back. So I didn't print that myself. I used that from the place that I ordered the invitations from. First, we will open up Microsoft Word and it's cut off, but you will hit file and then page setup. This is super important. So we're going to make the page as the size of the envelope. Now, if you go into the page size, you'll see that there are some already in here, like A4, A5. Those are really typical envelope sizes, but unfortunately with mine, I had to make my own custom one um, just so it fit. I probably could have used four by six to be honest, but I just put in the custom dimensions of what it said on the website. So, and I will link where my invites are from in the envelope so you guys can check out what I used. So to make that, we will do manage custom items. 
and you will basically click the plus sign at the bottom left and enter the width and the length dimensions. I left it untitled, but I'm gonna rename it quick just so it's a little bit more organized. But yeah, all you have to do is adjust the width and the length, make sure you get the dimensions of that, don't touch anything else, and click OK. And we will change the orientation in a few seconds, but I just wanted to show you. This is how it turns out. So this is the actual size of my envelope. We will go back into page orientation and then just switch the layout to horizontal. So now you don't have an eight and a half by 11 page, which is the default in Microsoft Word. You have your envelope size. And here is the fun part. We can start adding the names and the addresses, which is where the Excel or Google Sheet spreadsheet comes in. I just made up a name. I said soon to be Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And the font that I'm using for the names is called Barley. This is from Creative Market. Again, it is linked in the video description. And I'm just minimizing the size of it to make sure that it is all on one line. And then I centered it. Now for the street and the town, I downloaded the font market space, which again is from Creative Market, which will be linked in the video description. And then I adjusted the street name just so it looks more realistic. And I added a state and a random zip code. Then you can adjust the sizing to however you want. I adjusted the line spacing a little bit so everything looked pretty even. A quick tip is that I inputted all of the name and addresses into one Word document. So I have about like a hundred pages. So to make your life easier, what I did was I copy and pasted the same thing. And if you're taking it from the sheet, all you have to do is highlight where you're replacing it, click paste special and click unformatted text. That means that you do not have to change the font. Um, everything will be in the same exact format as it is. So that definitely helped with me because I was getting really frustrated when I kept pasting everything and it automatically went to the font Calibri. So once it's adjusted to where you like, we will click file, then print. Make sure that the printer is to your printer. The presets are going to be under default settings. And then I change the copies and pages to media quality because the media type is going to be envelopes. And you could change the quality to normal or best. I put it on normal and it was fine. Then you can click print and this is my printer up close. It is the Canon TS8120. I know this is sold out on a lot of websites, but I do have some alternatives in my Amazon shop, which is in the link in my bio. And this is the backup tray that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna open the printer and these little blue guys, make sure that you can adjust the size of the paper. So it registers that it is not an eight and a half by 11 paper. That way the printer knows that, okay, we're working with envelopes. This is also an ink gem printer for anyone who's wondering. But the problem with this printer and a lot of Canon printers is that it needs to register what the paper is. I wasn't allowed to register for some reason. So here it says the size or top of the paper needs to be registered. I just printed it with the loaded paper because when I tried to click replace and print, it wasn't leading me to anywhere. So if anyone has any suggestions for that, let me know but I just did it with a loaded paper and it worked amazing. And then it printed, and I kid you not, I did this on the first try. I'm very impressed with how fast it was. I was able to do at least 20 at a time. So I just put all of the envelopes back to back. So that definitely saved a lot of time. The most tedious part was probably just inserting all of the addresses and whatnot into the same format of the Word document, but play some music, listen to a podcast, and it will be a breeze. And this is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial. Thank you everyone so much again for watching this video. I hope all of you Cricut brides and regular brides out there learned something useful for this um, tutorial. Again, as always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. All right, I think I said everything. I will see you in the next video. Bye. But I can't help it, boy, she says to me. I'm not sure I truly gave my best Made a home but still feel like a guest And if I made just one